Today, we're telling the life story of Main Street Mafia Crip, Travis Ford. He's been putting in work for his gang since 12 years old. And trust, this nigga has been through a lot in these cold streets of LA. Yeah. All right. Welcome to Cali's Most Dangerous. Let's get into it. Travis Ford was born in Los Angeles, California, and raised by a single mom and grandma on 98th and Main between Main and Broadway. And if you don't know about LA, let me just say, do not come this way. These niggas do not play. Them is definitely bars, but I'm being dead serious. This is one of the most dangerous areas in Los Angeles, and it's home to a lot of notorious gangs, like the 9 4 Hoover Criminals, the Broadway Gangster Crips, and the 9 8 Main Street Mafia Crips, which the gang Travis Ford was put on and given a nickname Lil Hennessy, or Lil Henny for short. And at age 12, with his mind on money and mafia at an early age, he was never at like high school was the school he was supposed to attend. And when he was at lot, which is the home to different gangs like the Main Street Mafia Crips, the Broadway Gangsta Crips, the Avalon Gangsta Crips, and the Kitchen Crips, it was either gang politics or taking another nigga bitch. Either way, school wasn't in the mix. Bars, nigga. Anyways, if you're wondering why he was gangbanging at an early age, let me just inform you, it's nothing new. But in Travis Ford's case, he actually had close ties to the gang before getting put on. His uncle, OG Psycho Mike, who was one of the founders of Main Street and definitely a big figure from the set. And he is a stepson to Light Bright, who was also a prominent figure. But honestly, I don't think him being related to any Main Street Crips pushed him towards the gang. Cause this nigga was bad as hell. You know every hood that has that little Chris on their block? That little ghetto ass kid who's always hopping fences, always breaking shit and fighting? That was definitely this nigga. Well, Lil Henny was selling drugs, stealing cop cars. Yeah, fucking stealing cop cars. And he often ran away from home. As soon as he was in his teens, he ran away for good and moved to 103rd and Main Street with his best friend James Cox, also known as Tiny Bird. And right after leaving the nest, the streets applied a full press. And out here, you either bring your best or you fold like the rest. And Travis Ford, he definitely wasn't the rest. At age 15, while frontlining, he was cruising and looking for enemies when he spotted some hard time hustler Crips and got into a shootout with him. While trying to get away from the scene, a police officer took notice and a chase ensues. Over 40 police officers chased him, from 104th and Figueroa to an alley on 98th and Main before catching him with the 45 caliber pistol he used during the shooting. Look y'all, just some hood intel for my future DTA case catchers and my throwaway gun keepers. Just toss that shit while you running. You better off gambling. But Travis was only 15 when this happened. And like most people at his age, he wasn't thinking and ended up spending some time in juvenile hall. And during each of his stints, Travis held his own. It was down there fights for him daily and occasional riots. It got so bad that the camp started kicking him out. And it seemed like Mayhem followed him wherever he went. He got kicked out of Middleton, Camp Jarvis, and a few other camps. And by the time he was 18, his crimes escalated to robberies, hidden licks, and several other crimes. This time, sending him to jail and prison. Travis robbed a store on 140 San Pedro, robbed a subway, broke into houses, got into shootouts with the Swans, and even had some fights with some East Coast when he used to beef. But all them activities didn't go unpunished though. He spent some time in Salino and Delino, which are two prisons in California. And while locked up, Unfortunately, his best friend Tiny Bird was killed by some Raymond Avenue Crips. This death made Travis reevaluate his life choices, and from that point, he started focusing more on music. He got into the music scene a lot more after meeting Big Trill, who started connecting him with big names like The Game, Slim 400, Jeddikiss, and a lot of other dope rappers. But the situation that really put a battery on his back with the music and made him go even harder was the unfortunate passing of his grandmother. Her last words to him before she passed was make sure you go hard and take your family with you. These days, Travis Ford is still rapping and door shows around the LA area. He even signed to Snoopy Badass at one point, but that deal fell apart due to street politics and personal issues. But I'll let him explain a little bit more about that situation. Man, long story short, cuz it was like a investor nigga we had, and he wasn't fucking with the investor. He didn't want to fuck with the investor, whatever the case was, and, was, and shit, the investor wanted to fuck with both of us. You feel me? So, long story short, nigga, the investor, he didn't want to fuck with the investor. I rolled with the investor, nigga. You know how that go, the hate start. You feel me? Weird shit. And so, you know, 
nigga bump heads, nigga. Shit, nigga. Never seen that nigga since then, shit, nigga. Cuz used to pull up, man. Uh, shit, cuz used to, uh, nigga go to my boy Rambo house, you feel me? Spend a night there and shit. Look, I realized I can only say so much about the guy. I can't get into too much without connecting with him and asking him a few questions. Y'all definitely gotta stick around. I regret being a gang member. I don't regret being a gang member. I regret some of today's gang banging, though. You know, gang banging and change and shit, though. But nah, I don't would never regret the gang banging. Why I say that, being a gang member, because I made a nigga who it is, who I am today. You feel me? I had no best experience from being from Main Street. It's always been a way of living for me, like around me. Growing up on 98th and Main, 232 West 98th Street. You feel me? You know, it's always just been a Main Street this, Main Street that. People coming and going, young niggas in the hood getting put on, niggas getting put off, man. People passing, um, people passing through, getting put on, never seeing them again. Niggas' faces stand around. So, you know, it's never a. Uh, good experience, but I can say a bad experience is the jail shit. Today, prominent figure most definitely in today's day more of because I make this shit look good, man. I make this shit look good and I do this for the open doors for my whole section. And niggas always gonna remember my name and then nigga blow up later on and this and that and that's gonna open doors for the mainstream mafia crib. So you feel me? Yeah, prominent most definitely look at the people that I work with and came up with and a lot of niggas ain't doing that around me our DP situation nigga and I'm gonna speak up on the DP shit a little bit cause I'm from the mob nigga and we don't really speak up on our politics and shit like you don't see none of my homies or you don't see niggas and they're talking about me or talking about other niggas we don't do that amongst each other we don't talk about our politics and shit though but I can say this nigga ain't nobody bigger than the program I don't give a fuck if you motherfucking nigga banging the hood nigga and you motherfucking Lil Wayne nigga somebody nip somebody nigga you gonna see to somebody in the game life so i could say this some shit happened you know a couple of years ago you feel me and time came back around we waited time came back around and that shit was still up on the table about some other shit that happened a minute ago you feel me so you know it was just right to get that out the way because it's other niggas that's gonna have to pay for shit similar to that shit and i can't do nothing if nobody else can't do nothing you feel me so it's just the dp shit man as we know your politics is with that dp shit but politics and all that shit nigga don't really get into all that shit like you feel me you gonna get all that shit because the feds be watching like <laughs> my fear but yeah, nigga, real shit, though. You feel me? Shout out to the mainstream Mafia Crips, 984. Y'all know what it is, man. Yo, my three best songs and my number one, Where I Come From. That's my first song. So, Where I Come From, Hood with the Palm Trees, and my new shit out, man. That's coming out right now. I'm the one, nine to five, with Compton Menace, my nigga Link. And we got TikTok coming out with my nigga Glasses Malone. term goal and this shit man just trying to grow and uh, learn new things man you feel me and learn the business part of this i mean if it's not uh music i might want to own a label too you feel me soon you know a lot of shit though you feel me you know and stand above water stand out the way because the streets is tricky now nigga this shit ain't the same la ain't the same south central ain't the same man nobody ain't the same no more so you feel me i stay to myself man and grow and stay out the way and, and let the niggas jump in that lane well, I'm in this land, you did. That's it for the story of Travis Ford or Lil Henny. Hopefully, it gave y'all some insight on how he came up. What do y'all think about him, though? Y'all fuck with his music? Have you tapped in yet? Y'all know him personally? Matter of fact, any crazy stories about him? Y'all let me know in the comments, man. Let's have a conversation about him. From what I've seen and from the conversation I done had with him, he seems like a cool, upfront, real low key individual. His music is cool. He's done a lot of consistency when it comes to vlogging and reaching out. I respect the dude's grind. Subscribe. Hit that bell if you're well. 
Y'all say stay for dangers out there.